Hi everybody, welcome to this week's edition of The Verdict. We're all over the place uh, this week. We've got some uh, sprinting action from the Air Gold Cup meeting for you. We'll go to Punchestown as well as Sandown Park and also to Newmarket where we are racing back on the Roly Mile. So lots to fit in in the programme, lots of interesting stuff courtesy of the Race IQ data. And we're going to start in Ireland earlier last week and have a look at Punchestown. This was on the 17th of September. Amon Garney won the opening contest under Dylan Bramman Monigle, 100 to 30. Genealogy, we're going to have a look at him taking the 225 contest. And uh, well, there are a couple of favourites that were quite well back that went in Star Harbour and Ard Namara. But uh, it is genealogy that we are going to concentrate on. Let's have a look at what he achieved in terms of his time out there on the Punchestown track. He's trained by Aidan O'Brien. Ryan Moore was on board. And as you can see, his time index score, 0 to 10, is the scale. 5.87, with the average for the meeting of 7.59. So it's not a great time on the basis of the time index, and that's because it was quite steadily run. It turned into a bit of a dash up the home straight, so we didn't get a very good overall time uh, for the race. Nonetheless, I was impressed with how genealogy went about his business. So let's have a look at him and see what he achieved out on the track. We've got the side view, so we'll have a look at them uh, where they are positioned in a moment. He came from stall 10, he beat Storm Peace from 11, and Starry Desert came from stall number two. He is widest of all at this stage under Ryan Moore. Ryan was keen to send him forward. He was sixth fastest out of the stalls to get to 20 miles an hour, 2.76 seconds. Uh, so he was a bit slowly away, but uh, Ryan was very keen to get him to the lead on what is his second career start. And he achieves that as we roll them on. You can see Ryan there, he's still quite animated towards the outside. Uh, Storm Peace uh, towards his inside is quite keen with the big white face. Uh, ran pretty well in second place. But Ryan is now angling across and he is going to find himself in front just about as they get to the bend. The second furlong in this race was the fastest furlong for every single runner in the contest, so they've gone hard early to establish a position, and then Ryan's, once he's got to the front, has steadied it a little bit uh, through the next three furlongs, so he's really slowed the gallop down, and that's why overall we don't get a great time index score for this particular race. But we do get a very promising performance from this fella. I think he's really green, I don't think he's doing a lot. Look, Ryan's at him all the time, trying to get him to pick up the bridle. He's niggling away at him, He's not really handling going around the bend either, and we'll see that to better effect as they swing for home. He's kind of leaning on Ryan too with his mouth open. He looks a bit of an awkward ride, but nonetheless, going up the hill, Ryan has steadied it. Now look at him, he's blown the turn. He's run really wide and completely blown the turn. Now, we know that this was steadily run, 105.05% was the finishing speed percentage. So he's come home quite quickly in the end, Blowing the turn has dropped him to third, but now he rallies and runs on strongly, so plus 5% quicker in the final two furlongs than the rest of the race. And his eighth furlong was really strong compared to the rest of the field. You can see it here visually, 12.18, way better than the rest of the field, as eventually he gets his act together and surges past them. That home turn, though, and him really blowing it could have cost him at the race. He's gone from first to third, and then Ryan's had to switch him wide, and eventually he's run on. There's that finishing speed percentage, telling us that he finished quite quickly through the final couple of furlongs, and indeed he reached a top speed of 39.55 miles an hour uh, in the race. He is by Wooten Bassett out of a Dutch art mare, that's where some of his speed comes from, but for all the world he looks like he will stay further than this. This is a mile. He's going to stay further. He was only getting going in the closing stages. I describe him as gawky, awkward, and a bit clueless as well. But he's got the job done, and there's surely going to be more to come from him uh, when he wises up a little bit. He doesn't have any fancy entries at this stage, so it'll be softly, softly as far as he's concerned. But I'm pretty sure, given how green he was, given how he didn't handle the bend, I think Aidan will want to get at least another run into him. Uh, before he puts him away for uh, the winter. So let's have a look at 
uh, what he achieved in terms of uh, some of the race IQ data. You can see that top speed that he reached, second furlong. I refer to that as being the fastest furlong in the race for every horse as they all try to get a position. Stormpiece very quick out of the gates and then keen on the back of it, but still ran pretty well in second place. And you can see genealogy from stall 10, 2.76 seconds to get to 20 miles an hour. So he was quite slowly away. That's why Ryan was so animated on him in the early part of the race. Things did not go to plan, but he got the job done and there will be more to come from him. Okay, that was an interesting performance from Genealogy, I think, at uh, Punchestown. Uh, a really good performance to have a look at now is uh, that of Cosmic Year at Sandown last week. We can have a look at uh, the winners and the, the times that were produced on the day. The times weren't too bad at all, bar, unbelievably, Cosmic Year in the 250, 4.23 above the racing post uh, standard. It was a, a slow time, courtesy of how the race unfolded but Cosmic Year was wildly impressive to my eye and is going to go on to much better things. So let's put that time in context of, with all of the others by looking at the Race IQ time index and see what score he achieved lowest at Sandown. Really low, 5.37 over seven furlongs with the average at 6.17. So nothing flash on the clock in terms of his overall time performance but this was a very eye-catching effort from him in terms of what he did in the latter part of the race. So let's take it from the start. He comes from stall number six. He beats Rock Doro from number five. And he got Kai de Bethune from stall at number one, who was a bit slowly away and uh, never really threatened to win. Now, he's gone forward, this winner, Cosmic Year, uh, in a race that is very steadily run. They absolutely crawled out there. Rock Doro taking them along is a horse with a previous experience, unlike Cosmic Year, and set the standard in this race. But Cosmic Year was very well found in the market, backed overnight, backed all day, and he wins in very good style. In the style that his pedigree would suggest, because he's by Kingman out of passage of time. Now, in a race that's this steadily run, what he's going to have to do is sprint quicker than his rival. Steadily run races are about who can sprint best, it's not necessarily about position. Who can sprint best? And it was definitely he who sprinted better than his rivals. Looming up on the outside under Ocean Murphy, fifth furlong, 11.76 cosmic year. And what's good about him is that he can back that up. He didn't flash uh, a fast furlong and then weaken on the back of it and stop. No, he went even faster. Furlong six, 11.42. So that's where he showed a bright turn of foot. It's put Rock Doro away, and look, he's done it with Oshin Murphy not really doing a right lot in the saddle. He fired those two furlongs really on the bridle, and I reckon he could have gone a little bit quicker. Now, the steady nature of this race in the early part and the sprint finish leads to a finishing speed percentage that you might imagine is well over 100. He's finished really quick. He's done so for a couple of reasons. One, he saved energy in the early part of the race because they've gone really slow and he's able to sprint late on. And secondly, he's very talented and a fast horse. 109.69% his finishing speed percentage. So he's 9.69% quicker in the final couple of furlongs he was in the, in the rest of the race. And that's because of that steady early gallop. But what you've got to say is that he's beaten a horse who sets a good standard. The others never lay a glove on him and he quickens clear in really good style. He is uh, not entered up, surprisingly. He doesn't have any fancy entries uh, whatsoever. Um, the autumn stakes at Newmarket might be the place they will decide to go with him. He could be supplemented, of course, for some uh, big targets in the autumn. So Harry Child, who trains him, uh, might consider uh, giving him a supplement for, for a race like possibly the Dewhurst, something like that. But uh, I don't know whether they want to go sort of softly, softly uh, with him. Um, but he's had a great experience on his first career start and he's done it in, in grand style. Um, you just have to caveat what he did with thinking about the pace of that race. It was an absolute crawl for three furlongs. So what we've got to see from this fella is can he do it? Can he quicken up off a strong gallop when they go hard? when they really are racing from a long way out, will he be just as effective? Uh, and that's what we'll learn uh, going forward. But for now, we know that he is a very talented individual. And look at this, this is quite interesting because it, it tells us that he knew his job on his debut. Um, he was the fastest to get to 20 miles an hour, 2.69 seconds. So he was out of those stalls pretty quickly. 
And um, you can see that his top speed was reached in the sixth furlong. That's when they're all starting to quicken off that um, pedestrian gallop and he reached 38.94 uh, miles an hour. No other horse was able to uh, go faster than him. And you know, I don't often see it sound out a novice one by six and a half lengths, but that's exactly what Cosmic Gear did. He's a fascinating, well-bred son of Kingman. And I'll be interested to see where he goes next. Uh, it's time to concentrate on the speedsters now that uh, we saw at uh, the Air Gold Cup meeting. We saw a lot of sprints on the straight course and I think we saw some outstanding performances. I think I've picked out the, the three best. We're gonna start with Friday. Here are the winners uh, and uh, the times and it'll be pretty obvious uh, which race I'm gonna have a look at given that Star of Lady M set a new course record by over a second in the 340 contest. Jim Goldie uh, continues to fire in the winners. Yasa winning for him, taking the 445 contest. And Baronia in a, quite a steadily run race, quick enough from the back of the field and was quite impressive. But star of Lady M, who I really want to uh, concentrate on, 1.7 under the Racing Post standard. It's a very fast time. And this horse who has just not stopped improving all season. And now we're talking in terms of the Race IQ time index scores. We've had a, a look at a couple of uh, very low scores, but this is top notch. 9.97 scored by Star of Lady M in breaking that uh, course record. So uh, it's a, a very high score. You don't often see that. And the average for the meeting was 7.38. This is an outstanding performance from her. So we'll have a look at it. This is all about brazen speed. She comes from store five. Uh, Rage of Bambi from three, Frost at Door from six. This is a, a, a listed contest, so she's progressed through the season uh, winning six times, and she started uh, off the season winning a handicap of 75. Now she's bolted up in a listed race, and she was really impressive here. As she was at York two starts ago, she then flopped at Southall, but she was turned out quickly, and I think she bounced out of her York effort there. A little bit longer break now before coming to air. This is a speedy track, and she has sustained her speed. Third furlong, 10.31. Everything off the bridle in behind her. Frost at dawn in the yellow colours, the grey horse, trying to keep tabs with her. But she backs that furlong up with another one that's quick, 10.75 in furlong four. And she's not for catching thereafter. She sets a course record, a little bit careful about that, because there's not many races run at five and a half furlongs at air. So we just, just have to be a little wary of that. But nonetheless, this is a fantastic performance from Star of Lady M. She's by Havana Gray out of a, a street cry mare. And she has got raw speed, speed to burn. And this was very much a race that had its emphasis on speed. And I think on the straight course at air over uh, the Gold Cup meeting, I think it was all about horses that could lay up, horses that could sit handy particularly on this uh, straight course. We'll see that when we come to the, to the Air Gold Cup. And she's just dominated this field. And it was quite a strong listed race. Rage of Bambi, with that beige hat running on quite well. She'd won at York earlier this year. Uh, she uh, grabbed some black type here for finishing. In behind Star of Lady M, Frost at Dawn, who uh, broke a track record herself at uh, Maidan uh, last year, uh, last season. Um, well, she ran pretty well. That was her second start of the season. She might head back to Dubai, you'd have thought. She's only had uh, a light campaign since she, since she came back from there. She might be heading, heading that way. But you don't get many uh, more progressive horses than Star of Lady M. Six wins uh, this season and bounces back from that disappointing effort at Southall last time up. She's achieved a, a triple-digit speed figure in dominating her field. And now, most importantly, she has nabbed black type, and that makes her a valuable commodity uh, going forward. Her win time, uh, 1 minute 1.3. The race IQ par time, 1 minute 3.92. She's absolutely smashed uh, the race IQ par, which is set uh, as against what she achieved compared to historical data for a race of this class at air. So uh, this is some performance, whichever way you slice it. She was obviously visually impressive, but she's impressive on the data as well. Fourth quickest out of the stalls, 2.51 seconds to get to uh, 20 miles an hour. But uh, thereafter, she dominated uh, this race. She wins by uh, a length and a half. She reached a top speed of 43.77 miles an hour. That wasn't the, the top speed in the race. You can see that in the fourth furlong, Frost at Dawn, 
up to 43.94 uh, miles an hour, suggesting that she's at the top of her game at the moment, and it will be interesting if she goes out to Dubai. Star of Lady M, though, uh, well, she's uh, one of the success stories of the season for the David O'Mara yard. Uh, let's move on from a, a very fast filly to another one who won the uh, Silver Cup on Saturday afternoon. Here's the winners. And it was a really good day's racing, actually. Persica was quite impressive in the uh, 150. It was a good time as well for, for 10 furlongs on, on quite quick ground. Um, Alpha Clinic, we'll have a look at her in the 225. There's a course record from Lethal Levi, who won the Air Gold Cup. And, of course, we'll have a look at that as well. Great day's racing and uh, some fantastic uh, sprinting performances. Race IQ Time Index, to put that into some uh, sort of context, and you can see that the two races that we are going to have a look at, Alpha Kalenic and uh, Lethal Levi, both figured uh, very strongly in comparison to the other times on the day. Average of 7.94, but 9.98 for Alpha Kalenic and 9.99 for uh, Lethal Levi. He did complete the six furlongs in the Gold Cup quicker. Uh, than she achieved in the Silver Cup. But we'll go to her, first of all. Still 22, as she came from. She's beating a Ram Ram from 16, Bergerac from 2. So they're all over the place, so really. I didn't, didn't really think there was any particular strong track bias there. It was all about pace, really, uh, as we saw with Star of Lady M. Uh, I felt on the, the first uh, day of the meeting that perhaps just sort of somewhere up the middle was, was the best place to be. But Alpha Clinic wins this coming towards the stand side, but she does drift across, however, um, in the closing stages. And rather like the previous filly we had a look at, Star of Lady M, uh, this filly too has won six times this season on the bounce. She's won, gone from winning a maiden to now landing this off a mark of 93. She too, like Star of Lady M, is a remarkable success story. And she has got loads of speed and she's able to pick up quite strongly. She had to go and chase the horses on the far side. She was a little bit out of her ground and she went and chased them and ran them down very strongly. 10.79 seconds, uh, she flew through furlong five. She drifted across to them, but that got her just about to the lead and she was able to sustain her speed all the way to the line. She's run um, evenly, really. She's been rated nice and evenly. Horses that are rated evenly, you know, are hard to beat. Her finishing speed percentage tells us all about that. 100.31. The par is 100.27. So she's bang on par, really. Now, as we look at this now, she's not in shot, but she is going to come into shot as she quickens up that very quick fifth furlong of 10.79. There's the finishing speed percentage as against par. At, almost absolutely bang on. She rated really well. She not had to go too hard in the early part of the race. And she's finished off the race strongly. She's run evenly all the way uh, to the line. And uh, the drift to the left's a bit concerning. She's gone quite a long way from that uh, far side group, but she hasn't stopped going forward. I think that's the main thing. Uh, she's kept rolling despite uh, that drift. And, you know, she wouldn't have been out of place in the, in the Air Gold Cup itself. I don't think she would necessarily have won that. I think the winner of that was wildly impressive. We'll have a look at him in a minute. But she was good, wasn't she? Drifting across, but quickening up really well in the closing stages. And uh, that was that fast furlong that she was able to do, which got her to the front. Look at her ears pricked as soon as they get to the line. Uh, she has been a, a tremendous servant to connections. They must be absolutely delighted with her. And um, well, that was off 93. She's still got a bit of handicapping scope, but they'll be looking for a bit of black type, surely. That's what they'll want to get for her as connections have achieved with a star of Lady M. The two really nice uh, fast fillies. The sprinting division is a, is, a, is a little bit sparse at the moment, but I think uh, over the weekend we've seen three performances that suggest there's some light at the end of the tunnel as far as the sprinters are concerned. Alpha Clinic then, 2.41 seconds to get to 20 miles an hour, fourth fastest uh, in the race. 43.42 miles an hour was uh, her top speed. Um, a Ram Ram who finished off really strongly, won at Doncaster last time, finished off well and uh, reached a top speed a little bit quicker than Alpha Clinic, 43.7. Got going a bit late. She was away and gone by the time a Ram Ram uh, got going with that single furlong uh, that uh, put this race to bed. And she's run decisively a length and three quarters uh, in the end. She is a credit to Connections. I fancy there's more to come as well. Yeah, I think the performance of the week uh, here on The Verdict comes from Lethal Levi, who won the Air Gold Cup. 
and did it in fantastic fashion. Three lengths he won by. And it was a one, two, three in the race for Carl Burke. What a fantastic effort that was. They're all uh, drawn high. 20 for Lethal Levi, Silky Wilkie from 19, Corker from 24, and Aramis Gray from 13 was fourth. So let's see how he did this. And he did it just showing brazen speed. He'd won over seven furlongs at Newbury uh, on his previous start. That was a good effort where he made all and he had to really knuckle down in the closing stages and had to fight to win there. He didn't have to fight here. He's just too fast for his rivals. And you may ask, well, how does he size up as against Alpha Kalenic? Well, his win time was quicker. Uh, she was 1 minute 8.09 and uh, he was uh, quicker, just over 1 minute 7 seconds, 1 minute 7.75. So he's, um, he's faster than, than Alpha Kalenic and he's one with a bit in hand as uh, far as I could see. Finishing speed percentage was similar to what we got in the, the Air Silver Cups. They were running in quite a similar fashion. There's his fourth furlong, 10.37. That is quick. He's really quickened up. You remember that uh, Alpha Clinic was able to, to quicken up with a 10.79. Well, just put that into context. 10.37 in this horse, really quick. And then an 11.67 to finish the race off. Didn't get tired on the back of that very fast furlong just kept rolling and he's won good looking by three lengths another evenly run sprint but this was much better than the alpha clinic race it was a race that had a lot of strength in depth american affair was in there who'd won the portland he gets a bit of trouble in running in the yellow colors towards uh, the far side right hand side of your screen um, he's probably still in in pretty good form silky wilkie and uh, corker ran really well to be placed so did aramis gray uh, there was plenty of nice horses in this nice sprinters and lethal levi has absolutely destroyed them. You might say, well, was he on the better part of the track? I don't think there's evidence to, to necessarily uh, suggest that. Alpha Glenick won coming from over there, but she drifted right across the track and ended up nearer towards the far side. So I would put this down to him just being the, the best horse in the race by some way. You'll see him surge clear of Silky Wilkie in this shot with that very fast furlong that he produced much faster than Alpha Clinic could do. And uh, his win time was, was a sensationally good one, wasn't it? One minute 7.75, the race IQ par time. Get this, one minute 10.96 is miles under uh, the par that uh, you would expect for a race of, uh, of this standard, uh, looking at historical data. So this was a fabulous performance from Lethal Levi. He's always been a good front running sprinter who stays seven furlongs. But this is a career best by a mile. Uh, from this fella and they're going to have more fun with him because he does stay seven furlongs. There could be a fair bit more uh, to come uh, from him. He might go to Ascot possibly, you'd think, end of the year. Maybe he can find a, a seven furlong race there for him. But um, either way, uh, this, was, this was some sprinting effort from him. And it was really good on the clock too. He was quite quickly away from the stalls. 2.35 seconds to get up to 20 miles an hour. So he's third fastest. Um, and then he reached a top speed of 43.41 miles an hour to win by that three lengths and to show a fantastic turn of foot in the penultimate furlong to destroy the Air Gold Cup field. For the final race on the verdict this week, I, I could have gone to, to air. There were lots of uh, really good performances over the weekend there. But I liked a two-year-old who ran at Newmarket. Of course, we're back on the Roly Mile now uh, and won there on Saturday afternoon. Took the opening contest, Sea to Sky. It wasn't a great time, 6.663 outside the racing post standard. All the times were just on the, on the slow side uh, there. But this was, a, this was a nice performance from Sea to Sky uh, for the Rafe Beckett team, who just can do no wrong at the moment. Time index won't be um, too positive uh, for Sea to Sky. There you go, uh, 1.3 the score. And they're all quite low these times. The, the, um, the ground was perhaps a little bit uh, easier than it advertised. The average was 2.75 and slowest time of the day was, was sea to sky. But that does not tell us the whole story. This will. Sea to sky comes from stall number three. Sahoub was second from four. Kasparti was third from five. Hector Crouch was the man on board the winner, who had finished second on debut at Sandown over seven furlongs and was up in trip here to a mile. And, um, She's done this really well in the end. It's an absolute crawl in the early part of the race, and that is why we have got quite a poor time from her. But she's held up in behind the speed, never necessarily ideal on the Roly Mile. You really want to be handy, and 
particularly if they're going to go steady. And she's able to pick up and stay on very strongly in the closing stages. And surely the inference must be that she would have been better if she had got a much stronger gallop to go at. And she could be a pretty useful filly going forward. She really wasn't seen to best effect, I don't think. She's over towards the far side, white sleeves and white cap. They're still going steady at this stage, so steady that they're able to record a finishing speed percentage uh, that was just under 110. So 10% quicker in the final couple of furlongs than the rest of the race. So it does turn into a bit of a dash and she's not really bred to sprint. She's not really bred to be a fast horse. She's bred to stay. That's going to be her game. But she's able to quicken up well enough. 11.46 through the seventh furlong over on the far side. And she gets better and better as the race goes on. Her final two furlongs, 23.62. The runner-up, 24.17. Look at her coming out of the dip there. She just changes her legs. She's running around a bit under pressure. She's found loads having been held up in a steadily run race. Wouldn't have been run to suit. And Sahoub in second, who was going better than her two out, couldn't live with her surge. You see there, Sahoub's on the bridle. Jockey's not moved. Whereas the winner, being niggled along quite vigorously by Hector Crouch in behind, but she responds to such good effect that she absolutely flies home and is really getting the hang of things in the closing stages. Plenty of promise on that debut at Sandown. And here, 11.46 through the penultimate furlong, surged her to the front and she did it whilst being inexperienced as well. She was all over the place under pressure but she was still able to win very nicely indeed. I think she'd have been much better suited by a stronger gallop. She'd have been more impressive if she'd got that. I think people might have been talking about her as being a, a really nice staying filly uh, for next year and quotes for the Oaks and that kind of thing might have come in. But this race was not strongly run. It didn't necessarily uh, test her to, the, to her full ability, really. And um, we'll see where they go with her. But I think she's pretty useful. Look at that big, long stride that she's got. She grabs the ground, and she's flown away from her rivals in the closing stages. Wind time, 142.63. The part time is a long way under that, 138.48. So nowhere near the part time that you would expect. And people might mark, mark her down because of that. But it wasn't her fault that they went a crawl for the first three furlongs. And she was inconvenienced by that crawl, yet she was still able to win, still able to quicken up that 11.46 second furlong to get to the front and win. She was slowly away as well. Look at that, 3.34 seconds uh, to get to 20 miles an hour. So she was seventh fastest uh, in the race. Overall, she nearly got to 40 miles an hour, 39.89. Uh, she did uh, through the race. She wasn't faster than Sahub and she wasn't faster than uh, Kate O'Reilly either. There was a few of them actually quicker than her, but she stayed on very strongly and she wins two and a half lengths. I think she could be very useful and she might just go under the radar a little bit, I think. So she's worth putting in your racing TV tracker, uh, Sea to Sky. So those are all the races we're going to look at in the verdict uh, this week. Lots of speed on show out there, some, some cracking speed. Lethal Levi was really good, very fast, made all to win the Air Gold Cup. And being prominent on that speed favouring track was really important, I think, at the meeting, because we saw Star of Lady M making all the running and Alpha Kalenic uh, surging to the front, having been ridden prominently as well. Uh, we also had a look at a very nice two-year-old at uh, Sandown. Cosmic Year for the Harry Charlton team, bolted up under Ocean Murphy by more than six lengths. Fine turn of foot uh, to win that. Genealogy as well, work in progress for Aidan O'Brien. So that is it for this week's edition of The Verdict. Catch my verdict extra column on the website on Wednesday, and I'll see you next week.
From Gold Cups to Grand Nationals, the latest big races to the famous clashes of the past, Racing TV's YouTube channel has it all. Rachel Blackmore, history in the National Manila Times win. Catch up on episodes of shows that you might have missed or enjoy hours of replays of some of your favourite races from the last 20 years. Simply head to YouTube and search for Racing TV. You'll never be far away from watching the next big race.